The CZ75 SP01 Shadow Target 2. That's a long name for a pistol. The gun I'm going to talk about today is the CZ Custom Shop version of the Shadow series of the SP01 model of the CZ75 line. As it happens, it's a very popular pistol in IPSC and USPSA, along with its clone, the Tanfolio. Hi guys, this is Tracer83, and today I'm going to be talking about another competition pistol and probably the nicest handgun that I've ever bought. For those of you who have been watching my channel for a while, thank you by the way, you're probably wondering what happened to the P320 that I talked so much about. Well, I still have it, and it's still a great competition gun. It's still a great gun in general, and I plan to shoot it next month at the New Mexico IDPA State Championship. The CZ, though, is something I've always wanted to try out, especially since steel frame double action, single action guns are currently being used by some of the world's top competitors in IPSC and USPSA. The problem is they're really hard to find right now, along with the Tanfos. So when I saw the Target 2 on Gun Broker, I decided I better go ahead and jump on it. Another reason I had to give the P320 a break was the magazines I was using bit the dust. I don't know if you know this, but SIG makes really good, well-constructed magazines, but the trade-off is if you damage them, or if especially the feed lips start to get bent or swell, then they're pretty much toast. Maybe there are folks out there that can work on them, but I decided I might as well just go ahead and put a bunch more on order. While P320 mags, especially the full-sized ones, are also really hard to get a hold of right now, so I had to put them on back order, and it was more than a month before I got them in the mail. So there's another reason I went ahead and got the CZ. One thing that makes CZs and guns like them so popular for competition is their weight. Unloaded at 41 ounces, which the Target 2 is just a variant of the SP01. It's about 11 ounces heavier than a gun like the full-size P320. Also about 11 ounces heavier than an XDM 525 like this one. And almost a pound heavier than a Glock 34. This makes the CZ a little bit harder to steer between targets but it makes it a lot easier to control under recoil, which is great. Like all CZs, the Target 2 has a low profile, low riding slide that runs inside the frame, which helps reduce muzzle flip and recoil. It comes with a narrow blade fiber optic front sight, serrations on the top of the slide to help reduce glare, front and rear cocking serrations, and a competition rear sight, which is adjustable. Internally, it has a steel guide rod and 11 pound recoil spring. The slide release is not ambidextrous, so it's just on the left side for this model, but the external safety is ambidextrous. So paddles on both sides for your thumb. The Target 2 does not have a manual decocker, which means that for USPSA, where you have to start with a hammer down condition and a double action first pull after loading you have to manually lower the hammer onto the onto the firing pin as long as you keep the pistol pointed in a safe direction take your time and pay attention to what you're doing this should not be a problem the target 2 also comes with a competition hammer which changes the internal geometry of the firing mechanism improving trigger pull also it has a very nice beaver tail and an improved contour for the web of your hand. It has aluminum checkered side panels and checkering on the back and the front of the grip. The mag release is extended and perfectly situated for my hand given the shape of my hand and where my thumb likes to sit. And then also the Magwell is beveled. It's a little hard to see here, and you can see it's kind of chewed up from all the practice I've been doing, but that helps quite a bit as well. The magazines have an 18 round capacity with an extended base pad, which also helps getting a grip on the mag, getting it in and out of mag pouches for your reloads. One of the shortcomings to the pistol that I found is the magazines themselves. The factory magazines, um, they appear to come with kind of weak springs and on a couple of stages my 
first couple of matches in the desert, I noticed that if I got just a little bit of sand in them, then the follower would hang up and the rounds would just kind of rattle around inside causing malfunctions. I've since put 10% heavier springs in these and I haven't had that issue since. But I also ordered several of the less expensive Mechgar magazines. These appear to come in and out of the pistol or go in and out of the pistol a little bit easier. I haven't had any feeding issues with them and the follower is a stiffer construction and seems to line up a lot better. The grip size, shape, and contour is very ergonomic and allows me to get my hand up on the gun consistently every time. It also helps me get to the controls a lot easier. Something I like about the single action style safety is like a 1911, it allows you to ride your thumbs up on the top, giving you added repeatability. The only downside ergonomically that I've seen is the slide release is situated so far forward that unless you have really long thumbs, it's gonna be hard to get to it with your dominant hand. So when reloading from slide lock, it's a little bit slower for me because I have to reload the mag and then flip the catch with my, my support hand. That'll get better with training and with time, I'm sure. Lastly, I'll talk about what I consider to be the defining characteristic of this pistol, and that's the trigger. From the CZ Custom Shop, it comes with an Angus Hobdell proprietary trigger job, and that gives the pistol a little over a six and a half pound double action pull, and just under three pound single action pull. The double action pull is very, very smooth, and there is no perceivable stacking or crunching. It's just a smooth take up to the rear with no interference. And that's largely because there is no internal firing pin block or safety plunger. That's one of the things that makes this primarily a competition gun over an actual service pistol like the standard SP-01. The custom shop has reportedly drop tested these from various heights numerous times and never had an unintentional discharge, but that's something to keep, it, to keep in mind. The single action pull, again, has very, very little, little take up, and it's very smooth, very light, makes rapid firing in multiple shot strings and target transitions very easy. Overall impressions, this gun is very easy to shoot, handle, and manipulate. The double action pull did take a little bit of getting used to, and I know a lot of people don't really like double action triggers because they want the same trigger pull every time. But on this pistol, it's only about as heavy as my stock P320 trigger right now. And when drawing the gun and taking a fast first shot, it's almost imperceptible the difference between the double action and the single action because you just put your sights on target, press the trigger. Full disclosure, this pistol, this trigger is currently broken. You see, as a double action pistol, it should be returning on its own, but it's not. And that's because a couple of days ago, after about 3,800 rounds, the trigger return spring broke. That's something that can and does happen with double action, single action guns. I wasn't expecting it to happen so soon, but I've also abused this pistol a lot since I, since I bought it. I've done a lot of dry firing with it and a lot of shooting. I don't have any spare parts on hand. They're all in the mail right now. I ordered them from the CZ Custom Shop website a couple of nights ago. They should be here pretty soon. I ordered replacement springs, recoil spring, main spring, a couple more trigger return springs, and also uh, an additional slide lock. Because not just with these pistols, with a 1911, I've had a, a slide stop shear off on a 1911 I owned before. Uh, and that that can and reportedly does happen with the CZs. 
So if you're if you're planning on getting one of these, I, I do recommend getting replacement components. That sounds like more trouble than it's worth, but that's just the trade-off for shooting a highly tuned steel gun. Since the trigger return spring broke on the CZ, I got the opportunity to kind of compare it to the P320. I took the SIG back to Tucson for a USPSA match yesterday, and as much as I like the SIG, it's a completely different gun. And since I'm gonna be moving in a couple of months again, I'm probably not gonna have the opportunity to send it off for a trigger job like I keep wanting to. Long story short, the match sucked. I did terribly. Aside from coming up with a couple of lousy stage plans, I missed every draw, botched every reload, I think, pulled two misses and just shot slowly all around. That being said, I'm gonna have to take the next month to get practiced back up with the, the SIG because even though I've got replacement parts coming in for the CZ, I'm not gonna be able to shoot it at the New Mexico State IDPA Championship in October. That's because it doesn't qualify for uh, SSP or ESP due to its weight, and it also has what IDPA considers to be a full-length dust cover. So if you want to shoot IDPA with a CZ, you're going to have to get a standard CZ-75 without the full-length rail, or get a CZ that is polymer like the PO7 or PO9. To wrap this up guys, the CZ-75 SP-01 Shadow Target 2 has not disappointed me even though I've put some wear on it and have to change out a minor part. It feels really good, shoots small groups, and looks great. This is perhaps the most aesthetically pleasing pistol I've ever owned. As always, I hope you found this video informative or at least entertaining. If you got questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down in the comments section below. Make sure you click that subscribe button, like and share with your friends, and until next time, keep your eye on that front sight.